Hey again guys and welcome back. It seems like the packages are flowing from China as normal now. So while being a little bit more cautious than usual, it's time for another mailbag. First one up is this big one, simply because I'm the most excited about it. It has was ordered on March 16, came in on the 27th. $26.21. This is uh, more expensive than what I would typically order, but I think this should be worth it. Big box, and there it blows. So this here. Oh man, that is very cool. This is a um, hotbed steel plate for a 3D printer. Now the goal of this typically is to put it on a um, hotbed with a magnetic sort of base, but I think this thing is actually heavy enough. It's actually uh, it's quite quite thick and actually very heavy. Um, that I could probably just drop it on the bed and put little clips on it. I can see that they treated the edges. I don't know if you can see in the reflection there. They've hit the edges with a wire wheel to try to uh, cut down on the um, sharpness of the edge. But apparently you should be able to flex this and it'll come back to its original shape. So you print directly on top of this and then you just flex it and you're stuff will just fly right off. Now I've heard of some difficulties printing on metal for some prints and if I do have those difficulties I can always put those fancy stickers on top but for now I think I'd really like to try this on my 3D printer. Now I do have an update coming on my 3D printer which this will be featured in uh, which means that I will try it on and we will do a couple test prints and all that will be in its own separate video. But for now, just know that this thing uh, is $26 and it's a bit of a risk and I really hope it works out. Next one up, we have this one here. It says extra long twist drill bit 1.5 by 160 millimeters, February 10th to March 20th and $3.15. One drill bit, two drill bits, and three drill bits. So these are, as you can tell, drill bits. So they're actually super thin, 1.5 millimeters, and they are super long. Um, and the reason for that is I bought a set of drill bits Uh, these guys here. Uh, do I have another one? Yeah, one more. And I love these guys so much because I was able to drill through 2x4s widthwise um, to pre-drill holes so that uh, the holes don't don't uh, uh, snap when you when you put in a screw. Um, but the smallest one, which actually was a little bit bigger than this, I think it was 2 or 2.5 millimeter. What's this guy here? Yeah, this one's uh, 3 millimeters, so I guess it would be like a 2 or 2.5, and these are 1.5. Um, I wasn't paying attention, and I drilled a little bit crooked, and it twisted itself onto itself. But not before completing like 40 holes, like... It was a good drill bit for the price. It was very cheap, so I figured I need some more um, to replace those. And I think I'm going to get some that are a little bit bigger because I think 1.5 mil is a bit small. I think I'm going to go up to uh, 2 or 2.5 because I think the 3 mil is a bit big for a number 8 screw. So, yeah, I got some more. They were, like, very cheap. They were... Um, three dollars and fifteen cents so a dollar five each and I found some at a hardware store and they were something like twenty dollars each here and you know what I'm not convinced they don't just come from the same factory so ordered some more have them on hand 
probably will order some more, just slightly bigger diameter than this. Pretty awesome, but we can move on to the next one. Next one up is this one, which just came today. So March 5th to April 1st. So I guess now you get to know how long it is between filming and releasing videos. Um, $1.41 and it is described as color ring resistance and 140182100 times one. But it seems like I could only find the price for one item in here. So I don't know what else is in here. Okay. J only resistors. Oh, I guess that's the number here. Now, some of you may have figured out, and some of you may have not, that uh, I'm collecting parts because I am going to be producing another circuit board. So these resistors are part of that process. And I don't see the figure written on here. And let's see, it is color code. Um, looks like brown, black, black, silver, brown, or brown, silver, black, black. So let's try brown, black, black, silver, or gray, I guess. So that's uh, one, zero, zero, and then gray is not a multiplier. So I guess it would be, um, the other way, which would be uh, brown, silver, black, black. So silver is eight. So that would be one, eight, zero, and z times one. So 180 ohm resistors. So we're gonna add these to the catalog as soon as I check the validity of that measurement or of that guess, I suppose. Um, in resistance, where am I? Ohms, yeah, okay. I accidentally turned the dial to the correct position. Hundred and, can you see that? Probably not. Hundred and seventy-seven? Hundred and seventy-seven ohms, so close enough to 180 ohms. And so these are going to be for the next batch of PCBs that I'll be able to send to my friends and raffle them off or whatever. They're not ordered yet, but I hope to get on that pretty soon. Next one up is this one here, which is 100 pieces black MI jumper long black times 100 and five millimeter F5 Piranha LED, five millimeter Piranha white times 100. And they were 330 and 598 each. Ordered March 5th, delivered March 25th. And it's exactly what you expect. So some jumpers and some LEDs. Let's take a closer look. So first up in that bag is these, the jumpers. They're the $3 item here. And basically what they are is these little short jumpers. If you've ever installed hard drives back in the day, they used to come with these uh, jumpers, but these guys have an extra sort of arm so you can pick them up and move them around. And I think the best example for that is Gadget Reboot's uh, kit here, where these little jumpers here could be replaced by these little arm ones. So. There's nothing wrong with uh, Gadget Reboot's kit at all. It's just that these little things are much harder for people with big sausage hands like I have to get in there and try to pull one out when, you know, you can just have a little handle. And uh, I, I told him that it's like my, literally my only complaint with this thing. And uh, it's not really a complaint. I mean, to be fair, he's not a professional engineer. Neither am I. And this kit has no real faults mine has some actual faults. So just to be clear, I'm not putting them down. Um, I said these things would have been nice. And he said, Oh, yeah, I actually had those on order, but uh, didn't have any left um, by the time I sent you the kit. So you know, turns out he's smarter than me anyways. So these guys here are simply because of that um, board I'm having made at some point 
soon. Um, I want a nice connect and disconnect, um, easy way to connect and disconnect. So I ordered these to check the quality of them and they seem pretty good. I'm going to try a few and then I'm probably going to order more because I'm not sure how many boards I'm going to want to produce. And here's another shot of them because I guess you probably want me to check my focus before I actually start filming, huh? And also in that bag, and far more expensive, double the price of those 100 jumpers, are these 100 LEDs, but they're Piranha LEDs. Now I've heard of these before and I have seen them in products, but I'm not really sure what makes them so special. They have a lens and they have these kind of, uh, you know, feet that are like through hole. Um, I can tell that these two are parallel together and these two are parallel together. Don't know which one's positive, which one's negative, but I will put the parallel pairs on the same rails, like so. And uh, I could go look up what kind of voltage these things take, but um, I'd rather do it this way. So I have 15 volts here on this power supply, but it is current limited to 20 milliamps. Now, a regular uh, five mil LED can take 20 milliamps all day. So basically the current will rise up or the voltage will rise up until the current hits 20 milliamps. And then at 20 milliamps, um, the um, voltage will stay where it was. If it climbed any higher, the current would go up higher, but this is a limited supply. So we'll see what kind of voltage it gives us. So, oh, there we go. Got polarity correct in the first shot. First thing I have to say is it is really bright, nicely bright. Um, if I stare at this, I'm a little photosensitive, but uh, if I stare at this, this is pretty darn bright. And it looks like it is bright at 3.03 volts. Now, I don't know if you can see that because I'm now blinded and uh, I can't really see in the viewfinder of my camera. I have a spot in my vision, um, but we are at the 20 milliamps. So if I move the current limiting up a little bit, we'll see a 25 milliamps. It's getting, actually, it is getting brighter. I'm going to check 3.11 volts. I don't know how high of a current this thing can tolerate. Whoop. That might be overdriving it a bit, but that is ridiculously bright. That's like a little star. Let's go up a little bit, a little bit higher. Let's go 100 milliamps. I have no idea how high these are supposed to go, but I have 100. The point is the experiment. So that is now extremely bright. If I point it down onto the bench, you can see that uh, the single LED uh, competes with my uh, studio lights here. Not very well. Like obviously, it's not overpowering it, but it is competing. And don't forget, this is running at, let's say, yeah, uh, about uh, 0.4 of a watt. And my studio light, which is quite a bit higher, but it is uh, 50 watts. So, yeah, quite bright. And that little LED seems to have survived that uh, drag race. So I'm going to zoom you in so you can see what this thing looks like. Um, and then, I don't know, maybe together we can figure out what the heck they're used for. I'm going to try my best not to bump it, but I hope you can just about see that these two bottom legs here, this guy and this guy, are connected together to the bottom, this little circle, and these this two, these two top legs are connected to each other, but not to that circle, this little gap there. That's kind of the best way I can think to do it, and I can also flip it around so you can see what the actual top of the diode looks like. Should be quite interesting to play with these. They are quite bright and um, I think the lens is a lot more focused than a regular little LED. And clearly since it seems to run at higher current, maybe it tolerates higher current uh, or maybe it's meant to be run at higher current. Don't know yet, soon to find out. Ladies and gentlemen, it has become a war of attrition. Can I finish this video before running out of battery in the camera? Starting to doubt it, but let's let's try. So one, two, five, ten pieces, DC, five hundred milliamp, one five V zero zero one times ten. Six dollars and sixty-eight cents. March eight ordered came in today on April Fool's Day.
All right, so 10 modules of some sort. Let's zoom you in, take a closer look. So I got 10 of these little modules, and I think what they are, yeah, this is entirely what they are. So these modules take a small voltage in, um, I think 1.5 to maybe 3.5 or something like that, maybe even to, to 4, and puts out 5 volts out but you can tell here that the pad looks like a USB connector. So you don't need to use a USB connector, you can just use a regular um, connector, but this should trans or convert a low voltage to a high one. And I did not prepare my power supply uh, quick enough, but I'm gonna go about one and a half volts, put power in ground here, 1.47 volts, um, this here would be ground. Looks like ground is this one here. Yeah, in minus. No guarantees it's going to make a good connection. And in plus. This could be a disaster, folks. Uh, because either this could go boom, not work, or, you know, I could run out of battery. Because it's going to happen any moment now. And then it can turn this to DC volts, and I should get five volts on this side. I'm gonna give it a go. It is lit, so five volts and ground. Do you guys see that? You do see that. Maybe not well, but you do see it. All right, here it goes. Five volts to ground, and we have five volts. I'm at 1.4 volts. Uh, let's see. Yeah, 1.48, I'm gonna drop it down Go, oh, 0 0.93, 0 0.93 volts. We're still getting five volts out. Oh, that's pretty good. I'm gonna drop it. I don't know how low we can go. That light's still on. All right, 0.7 volts in. 5.03 out. This thing's pretty robust. I think I can run this off a of jewel thief. 4 volts, I mean 0.4 volts in. Five, oh, we're starting to drop, drop the output now. Still though, we're still doing well. A little bit further down. Come on, can't go much lower than that, really? 0.2 volts. Oh, it's floating up 0.21 volts. That LED is getting dim. Yeah, okay, that's the limit. So let's crank it up. 0.25. Oh, nope, not enough. 0.3 volts. Not quite enough. 0.35. Not quite enough, although you will charge some devices off that. There we go. 0.42 volts. I'm going to drop it down a little bit. 0.41. Yeah, 0.41 just quite does the business. So these little boost boards should be really interesting. I want to characterize these because I have a project in mind which I've started filming um, but have not put out yet. Um, so I want to characterize how much uh, the efficiency curves and um, whether it can work on the full range of an 18650 or I'm not quite sure what I want to do with these but I do want to characterize them, so look forward to a video coming soon. And speaking quickly, because I have not changed the battery in the camera yet, uh, this lovely uh, pile of electronics and miscellaneous makes up today's mailbag. I want to thank my Patreon supporters who give me the support, not only moral support, but financial support in order to order these things especially in trying times like this, uh, where I can't even poke my employer to get me a co freaking contract so I can pay my mortgage. Um, you guys are awesome. So keep being awesome. If you want to support me in a non-monetary way, because I totally understand not everyone can spend a dollar a month on Patreon, completely get you, it's fine. Hit that subscribe button and leave a comment below those things will tell YouTube that my content is interesting and it might serve it to more people. If you want to go even further than that, tell your friends about this channel and uh, have them come take a look.
But either way, I want to thank you all for watching.